Beijing Olympics marked China's debut onto the international stage, illustrating the dramatic change that China has undergone since the 1980s. In a series of interviews, the Real News senior editor Paul Jay spoke to professor, former political prisoner, and political economist Min Chi Li. Uh, welcome back to the next segment of our interview with Min Chi Li on the current situation in China. Uh, welcome, Min Chi. The Olympics, if they were anything, were a great source of pride for China. Uh, we haven't seen uh, overt, kind of dark-looking sides of Chinese nationalism. It, it looked quite benign. The opening ceremonies were very global in outlook and seemed very inclusive. Uh, not, not the sort of thing uh, that, that looks at a kind of virulent nationalism. Uh, but what, what is the state of Chinese nationalism today? Well, that's a very complicated issue. You have the different political tendencies, different intellectual tendencies that may, to different degrees, be associated with the, the Chinese nationalism. You may have left nationalism and who are, you know, kind of critical of neoliberal globalization, uh, critical of American imperialism. And so their nationalist sentiments uh, are likely to be directed towards the U.S. And you also have the right-wing nationalism who are in favor of neoliberal globalization, in favor of westernization, but for some reason their sentiments tend to be directed towards targets like Japan. And sometimes you have people who uh, are not necessarily identified with either the left or right and are also associated with the nationalist sentiments and also have a strong sentiments towards either the U.S. or Japan. So first of all, it's a complicated issue. Well, why don't, we, why don't we focus on one area? Uh, to what extent is there a development of a big power nationalism, perhaps in the armed, in the armed forces, in the Chinese uh, Communist Party itself? My own view is that uh, as far as China's ruling elites are concerned, concerning China's big capitalists, and I would say you know, nationalism is not so much their own ideology. And their own ideology, if there's anything at all, is primarily neoliberal globalization. And they're very much identified with the uh, American hegemony. And that's reflected by the official slogans such as the China's peaceful rise, and which is to send a message to the American elites that China's rise is not going to challenge the American hegemony. That's about China's ruling elites. And I don't think nationalist sentiments affect the ordinary workers and peasants a lot either. Uh, it really affects China's uh, urban middle class a lot, what used to be known as intellectuals, but now play a crucial role in China's capitalist development in terms of people like the managers, uh, technicians, university professors, other professionals, so uh, as well as college students. And most of the overseas Chinese belong to this category. And does this nationalism express itself against the U.S. or more against Japan and some of these other kinds of questions that have emerged? Uh, thus, as I said earlier, it varied. And depending on the particular person's political stand, its point of view, and it could be directed towards the U.S., towards Japan. Uh, Japan, for some reason, seems to be a common target. But depending on whether you tend to be left or right nationalist, uh, you would either be against the U.S. or in favor of the U.S. In the next segment of our interview, let's discuss what is the nature of the struggle inside the Chinese Communist Party. Please join us for the next part of our interview with Min Chi Li.